Hey, I'm Dylan from Full of Hell. I'm Sam from Full of Hell. I'm Spencer Hazard. I'm Dave Bland from Full of Hell. And this is Amoebas, What's in My Bag. Um, so the first pick I have today is by uh, this guy, Kevin Martin. He goes under the name The Bug. I found him through my interest in Godflesh and like noise and metal. Um, he's kind of adjacent to that, but he's like a dub guy. This one like hit pretty hard when it came out last year. Um, it's got a lot of really cool MCs on it. It's got more mother on it. She's she's amazing. The beats are super heavy. I can listen to this like every day on this tour before before we play. This record plays in the audience and it gets me really hyped up. Five foot, stand on the feet and try and catch me outside. My first pick is Night of Lepus. It's a movie about giant killer rabbits. They like mutate the rabbits. They're trying to like fix their breeding cycle and it turns them into like 150 pound flesh eating rabbits. I used to watch it with my dad when I was little and it freaked me out. I didn't like rabbits. But I didn't know there was a Blu-ray, so I've got a Blu-ray now. Um, I got Generic Flipper by Flipper. old California punk band, like early influence on like noise rock. And like, um, you can tell for even a punk band that they were like way more open to experimenting and just pissing off the crowd. Like they did shows with Throbbing Gristle and SBK, like just classic industrial bands. Yeah, I think if you want to get into like noise rock and like just experimental like rock music and uh, industrial and stuff like that, you should start with this record. Awesome. We start off with uh, Crystal Logic by Manila Road. Look inside. Crystal Logic's what you find. For a three piece band that's uh, not as well known as something like Iron Maiden or something, I think it holds up a lot better. And vocals are amazing on it as well. And riffs are just songwriting in general. In, in, in all of this band is amazing. Um, my next pick is LA local band Gasp. <laughs> this album's called The Earwig's Guide to Traveling, and it's like a compilation of a bunch of seven inches and EPs and stuff. The first time I heard them, it just like melted my brain. They mix like traditional kind of like fast angry punk music with like psychedelic sounds and like crazy tape loops and cool samples. We really love this band. I feel like they're like criminally underrated, um, like a hidden gem in Southern California. And we're doing a split with them this year. So it's kind of like a full circle moment for us. I love these guys, they're, they're the best. My second pick is the Streets of Fire soundtrack. <laughs> It's a musical with Bill Paxton and Willem Dafoe. The first two tracks, Nowhere Fast and Sorcerer, are uh, really good. They've been stuck in my head forever since I've seen this movie. Sorcerer, it's like the guy who wrote all of Meatloaf's music, like helped write this. And it's got Ry Cooter and Dan Hartman. It's just a fun, fun musical. Uh, next, I have uh, Tony Williams' Lifetime. Like the most essential drum album ever, in my opinion. Uh, it's the heaviest drum jazz record, for sure, that exists, I think. And definitely changed my life the first time I heard it, at least from a drummer standpoint. Tony Williams is the best jazz drummer. He's awesome. I got uh, DNA on DNA. Big face. Uh, 
one of the first no wave records ever from the 70s new york crazy just free form music like they obviously were an influence on stuff like swans in sonic youth but like similar stuff to like lydia lunch and uh glenn bronca just like crazy guitar improvisation and just drums almost you can say it's like if they were actually writing music at all but they were just doing it in like almost like free jazz in like a punk band setting. Um, next pick for me, Godspeed You Black Emperor, Slow Riot for Zero Canada. This is a great EP, probably the saddest anarchist band in the world. Really amazing live. The last time I saw them, they actually played some tracks off of this, which I was really excited about. Um, some cool samples about guns and stuff on this one. I own a high-powered assault rifle. I own a, a 12-gauge double-barrel shotgun. I think things are going to get better before they get worse. No way. So when they play live, they always have two analog projectors, um, you know, putting visuals behind them, which I, I love. And uh, I'm really into like all the Montreal bands in this circle. Um, just really creative, really opened my mind up beyond like loud music. It's just a different way to look at it. And, uh, this record's fantastic. I picked uh, Dead Ringers. Jeremy Irons plays Twins, and Cronenberg uh, won an award for having him on the screen like twice at the same time, like split screening him. And it's incredible to watch and see him on screen twice as the same person. It's just a great movie, David Cronenberg rocks. Next I got uh, Herbie Hancock, Sextant. <laughs> this one is awesome for a jazz record. It touches more on like some electronic aspects. Some of the first sounds of like some weird electronic drums and stuff like that on this record. So for people that are into like house music and stuff like that, or any electronic music, but like jazz could listen to this as well. And it kind of touches on everything. I picked up uh, two Dinosaur Jr. CDs. Um, this is the first Dinosaur Jr. record. How did I release this song? Not stop degradation when you feel nothing. Like when they started the band, they talked about that they wanted to be like a punk version of like Neil Young or like a country punk band. And you can definitely tell on this one like that they're trying to find their footing. Um, this is their third record called Bug. It's a much darker record and it's a record that they wrote before they like initially imploded. Um, you can tell on some of the songs, like um, uh, don't like, they obviously were just like writing lyrics about how much they hated each other. But even though it's like an indie record, there's still like a ton of experimentation, like a bunch of like noise and blown out like guitar stuff. So it's like, it's a very interesting record for like that time period and for like an indie rock band. Um, my next pick is Earth Eater from Brooklyn. Uh, this record, Trinity. She writes like, like they're, just, they're just all hits. The beats are so heavy. Um, they're really catchy songs. It's it's pop to me, but it's it's really experimental in its delivery. Her visuals are insane. Um, I don't know, like uh, visually it, it, it's almost like kind of confrontational and, and the live show looks like totally insane. And she has like a record with Leia, another local from out there. It's just really cool to hear heavy electronic music that kind of comes from like a unsettling, strange, beautiful place. Every song in this record is a banger. This is a great record. My next pick is the soundtrack to Superfly. By Curtis Mayfield. My LD and just me for all junkers to see. Ghetto Prince is my name, making loves how I swing. I'm your pusher. Every song on this record is good. Um, I got it in my grandfather's car. 
It was my first car. It was just in the player already. So I just listened to it every time I drove for the first like year that I had a car. Next I got the Prodigy, Battle of the Land. For electronic record, it's so awesome. It's, it's really heavy, it's catchy. And I think every song on it, front to back is awesome, but they make an electronic album a live performance, which I think most people don't do nowadays, you know, at least with real drums and guitar and everything. So to me, this is like, yeah, amazing electronic album. This is Sepsis by Sissy Spacek. Initially LA based, but now they're based in Ohio. Noise collective combination of like just classic noise, power electronics, but then also noise core. This one, I mean, from the description on the back, it's mainly synthesizers. So I'm sure it's like cut up noise or just uh, freeform, less noise core and grind than most of their releases are. My next pick is a record by Benny the Butcher. He's on Griselda Records. You anything like me? Them hand to hand sales made you. Uh -huh. I'm one of them hustlers you gotta tell thank you. I got into Griselda Records a few years ago uh, through some friends. Uh, I always had like an interest in rap, but in particular, like this, this group of people, um, I feel like there's a lot of connecting points between the way my band operates and like my friends' bands operate and the way these guys do things. At the Griselda shows, man, it's the times they scream the words to the top of their lungs. It's like fans, they want you to hear them singing your song back to you. They want you to hear it, so they looking at you, they screaming that shit loud as they could. It feels very DIY, um, really on the ground. They work with a lot of really cool producers. Um, they just, they're really prolific too. Uh, Benny's like one of the best lyricists, I think, of like the modern era in rap, along with like West Side Gun and Conway the Machine. These guys. They're putting out tons of records every year. I think it's like a really exciting time in rap. Um, and this group of people from Buffalo are like kind of, for me, at the center of like the revival of like boom bap and like uh, just, uh, you know, putting out tons of shit all the time. It's a really, really cool record. Um, I got a lot of soundtracks. Uh, this is the House by the Cemetery soundtrack. It's Lucio Fulci. <laughs> Little kids like trying to get in this basement the whole time, and it scared me when I was very young. And the uh, this the soundtrack of all those old Italian horror movies are crazy, especially Fulci's, and it really sets the eerie graveyardy aspect to this movie. Freaking out. Next, I got uh, Three Six Mafia, Chapter Two, World Domination. Probably one of the first rap groups I ever heard. I love DJ Paul. He's one of the best hip hop producers. The Memphis style to me is the grittiest and most tasteful out of out of all of the different regions of rap in America. So this is definitely a, another life changing album. Um, my next pick is a split between Amps for Christ and Bastard Noise. <laughs> Two California staples. Um, they fragmented off of Man is the Bastard, who was a huge influence on us. It was a bass and drum power violence, but they combined really weird electronic noise with like, you know, really demented vocals. I love both sides, but in particular, the Amps for Christ is like a huge deal for me because they blend folk music with noise, and I think that's really interesting. This splits just like just a little piece in like a super massive discography. These people are geniuses, um, and uh, I don't have this record, so I'm really happy to have it now. Uh, next, I got "Brainstorming 2 by Bastard Noise and Christian Rennell. I try to pick up Bastard Noise records anywhere I can, but. There's like probably over 300 Master Noise records. Classic US noise and electronics. 
I haven't heard this one when this one's like a little more difficult to find because it's like on a way smaller label. So I'm excited to check this one out. Uh, next I have Miles Davis, Dark Magus. Um, it's a live performance. <laughs> I love this record. It's definitely his noisiest work ever. Maybe his most drugged out work. My grandfather really liked Miles Davis, so my, my grandmother would always be like, oh, this is music for psychopaths, but I think that's probably why I like it. And this, this is definitely the most psychotic Miles Davis. So I like, this touches on, it's almost basically a noise record. It's jazz, but it's, it's so intense that, yeah, I could pretty much consider this a beginning of noise record or something. Thank you guys so yeah, much. Thank you. Sick. Thanks for having us.